this shot. What a round, what a fight this has been. Fight of the night, fight of the year. You have witnessed history here tonight. Seriously, who's going to stop him? It's hammer time, kickboxing's main event, with all the news and views from both here and around the globe. Joining me, the hammer himself, Mark Castanini, this week in the studio, together, Jabbar Askarov and Steve Moxon, hot on the heels from their fight. I love it. It's going to be sensational, Andy. We're going to get an insight into the, the fighters' minds before, after, how they think the fight went down, all of that from their own mouths, what they think of the judges' decisions. It's going to be great. Plenty happening in the world of kickboxing. Plenty happening on the show. This is What's Ahead. And the fallout continues from the match of the year so far. Both gentlemen together. A profile on the very talented and lovely Kaylee Reese. And technique tips. The front kick we're going to take a look at. Hammer, the whys, the why nots, the do's and the don'ts. It's a great insight. Well, the front kick, one of the most basic of martial art techniques, but uh, it's, a, it's a great tool for every fighter to be using and uh, certainly we have a look at it and hopefully enjoy it. Caged Muay Thai 3, you will see it there, and Caged Muay Thai 3, one of many big shows coming up. It is indeed. Of course, uh, Marco PK taking on John Wayne Parr. That's going to be a really good and strategic battle. I look forward to that. Of course, we've got John Wayne Parr on next week talking about Caged Muay Thai. Speaking of John Wayne Parr, here he is to announce the combat lineup for Caged Muay Thai 3. Very excited about the 6th of July. I'm holding the very first title fight, so I'll have four titles on the line. Uh, Chris Bradford's going to fight Chris Johnson. Uh, Aaron Lee's fighting Mini T. Uh, Michael Bedardo is fighting uh, Tanui Crouch. Um, we're taking Muay Thai back a step where we're going back to almost the old school days where there was um, hemp ropes and then they didn't have the luxury of using a ring. So what I'm doing with introducing the cage is it adds a whole new concept to, to fighting. It takes away the, the laziness of using the ropes where you have to stand centre cage and, and commit to your, your shots and you can't run away as much. Very exciting for the fans and uh, also for the fighters. John Wayne Parr there, not only fighter but promoter. Difficult wearing two hats? Oh, it's a hell of a job, Andy. Mm. I'll tell you, being able to prepare yourself and prepare an event, mm. it's such a huge job. And sometimes in the past, fighters have, have really come undone doing Absolutely. that. Absolutely. You know, they've, they've got into the, the main event, which mm. they're usually fighting on, after promoting the fight, dealing with ticket issues, dealing with VIP guests, and they're just not there for the main event. So it can certainly have a, have a really serious impact on the fighter. What are your thoughts on the main event? Certainly a challenge. Well, I'll tell you what, Marco PK is, is a talent. Mm. There's no doubt about it. But is he past his prime? Is this his, his time to have a shot at John Wayne Parr? Take care of business and be back on the world stage in a big way again? You know, time will tell. John Wayne Parr, of course, disposed of uh, Mustafa Abdahali yep. in easy fashion. So he's back, no doubt about it. So it really is a mouth-watering match-up with those little gloves, which is going to be more than interesting. Kings of Combat, of course, Steve and Jabba, they were the main event for number nine. Number ten is coming up, not too far away, and again, it is stacked full of quality. Well, the Kings of Combat series has become uh, really you know, one of the stellar cards in, in the country or promotions in the country. Uh, the boys work hard, Isham Hanna and the crew work hard at putting you know, those, those cards together. The venues are generally packed, there's a great atmosphere, and the fights deliver. Um, you know, they've got some big names penned, penned down to, to fight on the next one, so that's going to be interesting. They certainly do. Let's hear from the promoter himself, Hisham Hanna. You know, we said it a couple of years ago, we're going to be here for the long haul and we're going to do some big shows. We've been doing that. August is shaping up to be another cracker, and December. Jabba will be on the card, we've got Corbett, we've got Slowinski, we've got some other special things happening, but I can't give out too many secrets, not just yet. Now, it's not only East Coast Bay shows, a big one in WA, an, an epic one, if you want to put it like that. The Riddler, Darren Reese, uh, putting the promoter's hat on himself. We're aiming towards our July show, which uh, we'll be incorporating in conjunction with our 10-year anniversary with Riddler's Gym. We're looking at making the July 20 show a bit of a super show, and our goal for that is to have 10 Riddler's Gym fighters on the show and really make it kind of Riddler's Gym versus the rest and uh, we're going to be featuring a special surprise for the event as well, so something that we're keeping under wraps at the moment. What is it with promoters? <laughs> They're not telling us a thing, but plenty promised. 
Well, they're keeping it under wraps or they haven't organised it Yeah, yet. one of the two. <laughs> so, yeah, but I think uh, when Riddler says he's going to deliver something mm. special, it's 10 years, they're going to do something great. It's a good show in WA and... You know, I'm, I'm without a doubt going to be uh, very surprised by what they bring. It's an addictive sport. We know it. Yeah. We love it. John Wayne Parr retired 10 months. He had to come back. Kaylee Reese retired. She had to come back. And it's great to see her back. Well, it certainly is. Well, Kaylee, you know, is a real, I suppose, great ambassador yep. for women's fighting under any style, I believe. She is the glamour girl on the Australian kickboxing scene. She is also our profile piece on It's Hammer Time. Introducing Kaylee Reese. I'm Kaylee Reese. I'm from Riddler's Gym in Perth, WA. Thai boxing is my life. Um, it's the first thing I think of when I wake up in the morning, and it's the last thing I think of when I go to bed at night. Motivating myself, I always think of my my opponent. So. If, if it's cold or it's raining and I can't be bothered getting out of bed, I think of them and if they're training and they're getting out of bed, then they're one step ahead of me. So that's what motivates me to keep going. So I don't want them to be out on the road running or kicking pads and me laying in bed. So I think if they're doing that, then I've got to get up as well because I don't want them to be one in front of me. Kaylee, one of the most well put together women in the world of Muay Thai. Very crisp all rounder, good knees, great grapple, solid boxing, good legs. Kaylee is certainly looking uh, focused in front of this massive crowd. Massive. Oh, yes! Nicely done. Pull over. It is an almost faultless performance from the Australian. In the time that I've been fighting, I've held the WMC state title, uh, the WMC Australian title, WKA Australian title, two WMC intercontinental titles, a 56 kilo WPMF world title and three WMC world titles in three different weight divisions. The first time I met and saw Kaylee was uh, actually seeing her fight uh, and I was super impressed with her speed and her natural ability. Um, and then several days later, as it so happened, she called up and inquired about coming to train at my gym. She was looking for a new gym. At first, I didn't know who I was talking to, and then I finally got this suspicion that she'd just fought on the weekend and that it was her. So having seen her fight that first time and after that first training session, I knew that she was something special. She had uh, unbelievable uh, speed and skill and just natural ability, a very, very quick eye and seemed to be super, super fit. Hayley Reese from Riddler's gym, her husband, Darren Riddler Reese in the corner. This is Kaylee in front of her home crowd. This is Kaylee at her textbook finest as the hammer set. I've got a bit of a funny nickname. They call me Hammer and Tong because that's the only pace I know is Hammer and Tong. I, I give 110% with everything I do. With training, I give 110%. With my diet, I give 110%. I've got a sports psychologist. I don't cut any corners with anything to do with my training. It's always Hammer and Tong. Um, I, don't have, I don't have a second pace. I just go hard all the time. I sat down with Darren and basically devised a plan of how I was going to get to the top and from, from the very beginning I started off with a list of girls' names just, just locally and as I fought them I crossed all the names off, then I branched out to nationally, crossed all the names off and then it branched out internationally so that was really a way that I set goals for myself and challenged myself because I'd always have a girl's name underneath the girl's name that I'd cross off. So rather than just continuing in day-to-day -day training and just plodding along, there was always that girl, or was always a group of girls that I knew that I had to beat to get to the top. Hudson's gonna let that right hand go, and she does now. It's been her prime weapon so far, countering with that right hand down the tube off Kaylee's kicking. Kaylee has become a huge role model to, to a lot of girls, literally every girl that ever sees her train, uh, because of how athletic she is, her speed, how she presents herself, how she talks. Other girls can relate to her and, and see themselves in that uh, position rather than the usual masculine kind of idea that, that people have. And uh, I think that's resulted in her popularity. You know, even in Perth, she's become a, a super popular fighter because she's uh, ruined the conception of what female fighters uh, were looked to be, um, but at the same time also became known as very, very skillful, very fast and very tough. 
You know, people literally had not seen her lose in Perth, um, but had seen her sustain injuries like broken ribs and broken noses and things like that, um, and never showed it during a fight. You know, she was the, the, the perfect specimen of, of beauty and brawn all in one, one package. I lost my first fight, which was a kickboxing fight. Um, then I changed over to Thai boxing with, with my current trainer, Darren Reese, and I lost that, f that fight as well. So I had two losses initially um, when I started and I, I didn't quite know whether to continue because you know, nobody wants to lose and f your first two losses you think, oh, should I continue with this kind of thing? Is it, my, is it my sort of thing? So I thought to myself, I'll give it another couple of turns and see how I go. Your winner and new I think I won about seven in a row and I thought, okay, this is for me. And from then on, I lost three, three fights in 47 fights. So it just goes to prove that if you keep pushing and you keep committing yourself and dedicating yourself to something, that you can make, make anything happen, you know? What a great look at Kaylee Reese there. Two words, hit home for me, role model. Well, and inspirational. Mm. I think, you know, what a great role model and what an inspiration for, for all females. Get in the gym, have a go, have a look at her. You know, even for the guys, don't let one loss determine your future. You know, so, and she's a classic example of that beautiful piece. What is it about you kickboxers punching above your weight too? <laughs> With Riddler? He's a good man, Riddler. Heart of gold. He is a good man. Time for a break here on Hammer Time. Stick around though. Up next, together, Moxon and Jabba. Hi right, guys, in the gym this week we're going to have a look at one of the most traditional basic techniques and universally used throughout many martial arts and recently even in the UFC, the push kick. If Chris is a big kicker and he's going to really load up those low kicks or body kicks, he's going to have to come on a, on a round motion with his hip. The way I'm going to negate that is by cutting off the rotation. So as he loads up that round kick, I'm going to kick him just on the belt line or above the belt line where the hip bone is and stop the kick rotating around. Off the lead leg, same principle, maybe I'll use my rear leg against his lead leg, so he'll switch up. And I'll just push it back, stop the rotation. You fight, if you're fighting a striker that's heavy handed, and they will come in and rotate big time off the shoulders. Maybe let's just elevate the kick a little bit. So this time, instead of the hips, we're coming up to the chest region and stopping the rotation of the shoulders. So Chris is going to really bomb, we'll try and bomb, and I'm just going to take that kick up, upstairs to the chest. One more time, and stop the rotation. That's going to tilt him backward, cut his range, and make it harder for him to get in. And I can set up my strikes off that. The last but not least technique of the push kicks is right up under the chin. Good dramatic effect, scores well on the judges' scorecards, and of course the crowd love it. Straight up under the chin, boom, right up there. Disorientates the opponent, one of the best techniques in ring sports and in self-defense in my opinion. Our look at the front kicks there as we welcome you back to Hammer Time. No front kicks in the studio tonight, hopefully. Last week we had a look at these two men, main eventing at Kings of Combat 9, and it is my pleasure to welcome Jabbar Askarov and also Steve Moxon into the studio. We'll start with you, Steve. Victory, but a tough night at the office. Yeah, definitely another tough fight, and they're always tough fights, and... Uh... You know, coming away with the win, doesn't matter how much you're hurting on the night, it feels great when you win. Jabba, thoughts on, on the fight? You thought you'd done enough to, to get the win? Yeah, actually, well, after the fight, I was really disappointed in the judges' decision. And I thought uh, judges didn't see the fight, they see what they want to see. Actually, two of the judges. And I'm 100% I'm not agree with the decision. And uh, some of the f my friends from Europe, they were like promoters and... Uh, Judges watch the fight and they totally not agree with the decision. So where am I, you know? There seemed to be a little bit of uh, confusion with the catching of the kick and the sweep. How did that play out in your mind? Well, everywhere is allowed. On the Glory Show I fought and I've done it. On the Yukau Show I've done it with K1 rules. I've done it, they allowed, they didn't even say nothing. 
And here I was confused as well, you know, when the referee came to me and said, like, you're not allowed to do that. I was like, well, I didn't understand that. Um, Jabbar spent a lot of the fight early on in southpaw position. Did that, did that get you? Did he, did he catch you out? No, not at all. I uh, expected, you know, he's, he's great from both sides, yep. orthodox and southpaw, and uh, has a lot of power. So I was expecting that. I was trying to attack his front leg, and straight away he changed to southpaw. Um, you know, he caught one kick and put me on the ground. Mm. That doesn't change the course of the fight. And uh, that was the only one body kick that I threw throughout the whole fight. So I don't believe that, that changes the course and the outcome of the fight. Well, Steve, your strategy was very much combination move, combination move. You were circling away from his power side, which you quickly adapted to the southpaw stance and, and stayed away from that power leg and power hand. Was that a strategy, just to, to keep moving and not get into a forward, backward and forward battle? Yeah, so it's just 101 when you're fighting mm. a southpaw move to your left. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm a kickboxer, but I'm not crazy. I don't want to stand <laughs> in front of Jabba with uh, the power in both hands that he has. So, you know, just keep moving. I've lost my last uh, two fights previous mm. to Jabba. So back to the drawing board, back to the training, back to the game plan. And, you know, I was mentally prepared and physically, physically prepared and uh, come in with a great game plan, which was to uh, move and fight him just like an amateur boxer. Yeah, get in, yeah. get out. There's no way I'm going to hurt a head like that. <laughs> OK, now, Jabbar has already said uh, very disappointed at the end of the fight, and, and we showed that last week here on, on Hammer Time. And the disappointment on one side, the elation on the other. Hammer, it's the emotional roller coaster that all professional sportsmen at some stage go through. If it wasn't a game, we wouldn't keep scores. It's a business. There's a, a winner and a loser. One's happy, one's filthy. Well, of course, and, it, and it's happened so many times in, in the years, you know, I've been involved with the fight sports. Sometimes you just shake your head and go, what were they thinking? In this, in this instance, we, we have the ability to look at different, different camera yep. angles. When you, when you look at a fight from a different angle, mm. you get a different perspective. And that's exactly what the judges are doing. They're looking at the fight from a different perspective. Where you sit can determine your view on that fight. Or and where the camera is if you're watching exactly. it Exactly. So if the judge is positioned behind mm. the fighter that's, that's throwing the combinations, he's going to think, did it land, didn't it land, it didn't look like it. So that can often sway the perspective. Mm. And, and we've seen that by looking at the vision. Um, you know, Java being upset, and I've known him for a long time, we go, we go way back, and he, he takes it very personally. This, this is the, these guys do this for a living. Absolutely. You know, it's like getting retrenched. You know, you, you feel gutted when it doesn't go your way. So Java had that, you know, mentality at the end of that, I take it. And, you know, he took it to heart, but it's the judges that, that make the decision. OK, a three-round fight, so close that the word rematch is obvious to me and Mark. But a rematch, should it be over five rounds and would you be interested? Well, you know what, like, not, not disrespect to Steve. He's done his job, he's just a fighter, you know, and he goes to the fight. But uh, I'm not really interesting and uh, after the days I'm not hurt inside, mm -hmm. I'll over the lose, I know that I won the fight. And later later on on YouTube, a lot of people are going to see that and they're going to make own decision. But, like, I'm not really looking for rematch, I have nothing to prove. But if Steve wants that, I'm 100%. I would never say not to know anyone. I would step in the ring and I promise to myself and I promise to everyone that would land, the fight won't end up last until the end. OK, until I will ask exactly the, the same question to, to you, Steve, a rematch. Possibility? Is it an interest or something you don't wish to talk about? No, definitely talk mm. about it. No, you know, Jabba just moved to Australia and I think we're going to spar together train together, yep. we might fight another three, four times in the yeah. years to come. We're both young and uh, Jab has proved himself all over the world, mm. over and over again. Um, you know, so I'm just here to, to punch on and uh, I turned up to work on Monday. I'm a cabinet maker by trade and that's my job. I fight and I go back to work. Job done. I'd love to see the cabinets you build because <laughs> I'll tell you what, you do a hell of a job <laughs> as a fighter. Um, your preparations, um, mentally and physically, irrespective of what discipline, do they change or are they identical? I think identical. It's, uh, it, you know, it's a bit of a selfish sport you know, in the whole fight game, but I uh, believe you know, in your own head, if you're prepared, that that plays more than anything. You can train and punch things as hard as you want, but if you're mentally not prepared, yep. it plays a huge, a huge role because the fight doesn't last long. And one other thing, the fight was supposed to be over five mm. rounds, and I get a call from Jabba's camp just a couple of weeks before saying, we want the fight three rounds. Jabba mm. wants the fight three rounds. 
I believe that uh, Jabba underestimated me, and to be honest with you, I expected more of Jabba, mm. and uh, you know, we will fight again, and uh, it doesn't worry me where it is, how it is, when it is. Um, you know, probably will be over five rounds. He's, he's tough as nails, and you know, I'm just want to get in there with the best. Mossy Abdullahi, that was going back to, to 2012, another illustration Bang that you'll fight whoever, whenever. Yeah, I do some crazy things, sometimes fighting at uh, different weight divisions. Yep. So I took that fight with Mossy and I uh, was fortunate enough to knock him out. Mm. And just after that, uh, fought Johan Ledon, you know, mm. in his weight division yep. and uh, with his own, with his old manager's uh, promotion. And that was at 74 kilos. Yeah. And that bloke was as big as Hammer the, the next night. And that was, uh, that wasn't a fun experience and lost a close fight on split points. Not as good looking as Hammer, I think. <laughs> it's fair to say to you, Mark. So nice to meet you, Raymond, sometimes. Jabba, obviously, uh, Steve, Steve just said he believes you, you maybe took him lightly. Is that a factor? Did you think you were going to walk in? I mean, let's be honest, a lot of people favoured you to win that fight. If they thought, you know, experience alone, you know, 110 yeah. fights, yeah. He's, he's fought all over the world and, you know, you're yeah. stepping up there. Did you take that fight there too lightly? There is no one fight in my life that I take it easy. Even I fight with a beginner, mm. you know, like with boys, 10 fights, 20, 20 fights, I never take a fight lightly. I was expecting to fight, you know, and I went there, I just wanted to test uh, Steve's power on the first round. I let him do whatever he want to do. I let him hit me. So I just want to see, you know, the people say he's a hard hitter. So I want to see if he's it. So I see that I can handle it, everything. Then I will start to work in the second and third round. And I thought that I won. I did enough to win, you know. I, if I wanted, like, if I was came back to my corner and people were saying, Jabba, you're losing the fight and we'll give a different way, I will, could plus 50% more. Yep, I could yep. plus a lot of more. I had, I had you know, a lot of to, to, to show more. But uh, I was confident that I was winning the fight. So I just keep, you know, safe and... Uh, let, let me ask you both this question. In all the people you've fought, where do you rate Steve? In, in, in the scale of everyone you've fought, is he at the upper end of your competitors, of, of your opponents? Where, do you, where would you place him against Well, I fought fight? a lot of tough... Boys, like you know, tough boys. Steve is a good fighter, you know, and uh, he's different to everyone. I like, you know, like I call fighter who fights. He fights with someone else. He fought, Steve fought other fighters, fist to fist. But with me, he wasn't fighting. He was escaping, kind of, you know, for the fights. And uh, maybe it was his plan, his tactic. But I would put him in the middle, like let's say, not bad, you know, not 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 too perfect. Okay, the question Steve asked right? of Steve, yeah. <laughs> Am I crazy to stand in front of him? Yeah. No way. I want to run away. I want to hit him. Score. The game is about scoring. I believe he just thought he'd come in, knock me out, go home, and job done. But where, it wasn't. Where do you put him, though, in, the, in all the fights you've had? How do you rate this man? He's definitely well at the top. You yeah. know, I've fought at all different weight divisions, mm -hmm. which is uh, something that I have to, uh, you know, research and look over and uh, maybe not do in the future and fight my weight division, which is 70, 71 kilos, no heavier. And, uh, you know, my game plan was totally different. I don't want to stand in front of him, which mm. I normally do, stand in front of people and uh, throw the big bombs and knock people out. So does Jabba, and he's proved it a lot more than I have, so uh, just wanted to keep moving. When are you up next? Who are you up yeah. next against? What's the rest of the year for you? Well, the rest of the year, I'm planning to fight less than this year mm. and uh, take on uh, big boys, like, you know, big names fight with them and uh, my next fight is in May this month but after that they're gonna have break but this one is coming it's for my tournament in Russia mm. it's have to be first fight I'm fighting Mike Zambidis and then finally in the final I'm gonna get I think Kishenko Artur Kishenko from Ukraine so it's gonna be a big tournament you know and uh, I go to train I go to get ready Huge tournament over in Russia. You'll certainly enjoy the trip and enjoy the fights also plenty happening on the domestic calendar Cage Muay Thai 3 with four belts up for grabs. The card is headlined by the gunslinger John Wayne Parr and Marco Piquet. Aaron Lee, Michael Bedardo and Chris Johnson just some of the names from the Metro. Then Glory 9 in the city that never sleeps. Our very own Steve McKinnon fighting in a light heavyweight eight-man eliminator featuring the legend Tyrone Spong. 200 grand up for grabs. So plenty happening around Australia, plenty happening here on Hammer Time as well. Next week, we are joined in the studio by a man that, well, I consider Australian kickboxing royalty. John Wayne Parr is in the house. We're also going to take a look at the series Warriors, the Mong Kong. 
So plenty ahead on Hammer Time. The last word tonight goes to our two special guests, Steve Moxon and Jabbar Askarov. What have you got to say? Well, uh, keep looking for me and I'll fight uh, often in Australia, I guess. I don't know where exactly, like Victoria, Queensland or see New South Wales somewhere. We'll see, you know, and uh, maybe somehow, if Steve wants to, we're going to get rematch, boxing, kickboxing, in general, power rules, in the cage, whenever, whatever, 24 hours, my door is open. Come and welcome. Steve? <laughs> Uh, firstly, I'd just like to thank uh, you, Andy, and uh, Hammer for having me on Hammer Time. Uh, on to bigger and better things and, uh, you know, representing Australia all over the world and uh, look forward to it. Thanks. Pleasure having you two guys here. Always a pleasure <laughs> seeing you, big fella. Another yeah. massive week on It's Hammer Time. Catch you next Wednesday. Keep your gloves up too.